Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Ansible series. I love Ansible and I'm really excited to be doing these videos. I hope this series has been as awesome for you guys so far as it has been for me to create these videos. Now in today's video, we are going to look at a way that we can differentiate a playbook by host in terms of which distribution the host is running. It's very common in most Linux shops to run multiple distributions. Maybe you are an Ubuntu shop or a Debian shop and you have a need for a different distribution for a one-off case, or maybe you are split 50-50, but regardless of what the situation is, perhaps you want to run plays only on certain distributions, and that's what we are going to explore in today's video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are on my laptop, and before we get started, I do want to show you guys a very important thing to do when you are working with a Git repository. Now this is not actually specific to Ansible, it's just a best practice when you are working in a collaborative environment where you have multiple people working on the same repository. Now for us, it's just you and I, so you are not actually working on a collaborative Git repository in this series, but we're going to pretend as though we are. So I'm going to CD into the directory for our repository, and these are the files that we have in there right now. Now the best practice I want to show you guys is running git pull. What git pull will do is it'll go ahead and pull down any changes that have been made since you last, well, pulled changes. So far, we've only been committing and pushing changes, but if someone else on the team has added something to Ansible, we might want to pull their changes down. Now, if version control is being handled properly, there's going to be a code review before people merge their changes in, but that's beyond the scope of this video. At a minimum, it's just a really good idea to do git pull every now and then, just in case someone else on the team has pushed any changes since you last worked on it. So I'll just press enter. And entering the correct passphrase is also a best practice. But anyway, we already knew what was going to happen, which is essentially nothing. It says we're already up to date. Again, you're the only one working on this repository so that's to be expected, but git pull, what that will do is pull down any changes, like I mentioned, that may have happened since the last time you worked on this repository. Anyway, we're all up to date and we're ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is add a fourth server. Now you don't actually have to follow along with this part right here because I haven't even told you to create a new server. I just want to show you an example that's going to set the stage for this video. And this is going to fail anyway, so just go ahead and watch this. You don't have to actually go ahead and do what I'm doing. But anyway, what I'm going to do is edit the inventory file. And I'm going to go here to the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and add another server, the server that I created off camera. And that's the IP address my DHCP server gave that server. So I'll save the file and then exit out. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and run the same playbook from the previous video, the one that installs Apache. So again, that's ansible-playbook, and we want it to ask the sudo password or the become password, as ansible refers to it as. And the playbook we want to run is the install Apache playbook. Again, we created this in a previous video. Anyway, I'll press enter and let's see this fail. And we can see that it actually failed. It says failed equals one, and it's actually referring to our new server right here. And I'll just mention real quick that off camera, not only did I create that server, but I also went ahead and copied my SSH key over to that as well, the Ansible key in particular, to make sure that we are actually able to SSH in and run Ansible commands, but it still failed. So let's scroll up and see if we could figure out why. And honestly, you've probably already guessed why, but as we can see right here, 
We are running the apt module to update the repository index, but it's telling us that the apt-get update command, there's really no such command, no such file or directory apt-get. So we can already determine right here that this module, the apt module, isn't compatible with this particular server because apparently it's not running a Debian or Ubuntu based distribution. Now if you've worked with other Linux distributions, then you already know that some distributions use different package managers. So for example, DNF, Yum, Pacman, there's a number of them. But if we're not running a distribution that has apt installed or uses apt at all to begin with, then obviously we are not going to be able to run the apt module against it. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen here. And over here on the last tab, I have the new server. We can see that it is actually running CentOS. We can see that right here because that is the name of the host. If the host name was not CentOS, we could simply do cat slash etsy os hyphen release just to see what that file contains. And there we go. We can see that we are running CentOS and it's version 8. And CentOS doesn't have the apt command at all. So if I do which apt, there's no such thing. And if it's old school, it might be apt get, but of course that's going to fail as well because, well, this is CentOS. It doesn't actually use that. So how do we actually work around this problem? So let's go ahead and bring up our previous playbook and see if we can fix this. So I'll just go ahead and edit that with Nano again, or you could use whatever text editor you want to use. And I'll open that up here. And right away we can see that it's running the apt module. I'm sure you remember that from the previous video. But what we want to do is not run the apt module against a distribution that is not supported. So I'm going to show you a way to accomplish that right now. So I'm going to add a new line here at the end. I'll make sure that I'm lined up with the A for apt. And we are going to type win and then colon. And for win, you can actually use this against any kind of variable. If you remember in a previous video, we were able to use gather facts to basically just pull a bunch of information about the server. We can actually use any of those variables here to complete our win statement. But I'm going to give you a built-in variable right now. And that is ansible underscore distribution. And we want to run this only when that is equal to Ubuntu. Now, if you are running Debian, for example, you can just replace Ubuntu with Debian and it'll still work. But we want to go ahead and add this to each of these plays here. Let's go ahead and save this file. And let's see if our result is any better now. Now look at this. Everything was successful. We have no errors at all. Failed is zero all the way down here. Now, what we also see is that with this host, this new one right here, it skipped three plays. And well, that's because I made it a requirement for the distribution to be Ubuntu for those plays to be executed. And since that's false with CentOS, it just basically skipped everything in the playbook. That did allow the playbook to finish, but you know, that's not very useful for our CentOS machine. We don't actually have Apache or any of the changes there that we have made in our Ubuntu system. So we can go ahead and fix that and we will later, but I want to go ahead and show you a few more things first. So let's go ahead and bring that file back up in our editor here. Now one thing I want to show you is that if you want to basically run this against a few different distributions, then the syntax changes a bit. We will use in instead of the double equal sign. And we will put the Ubuntu in double quotes and square brackets here. But then we can also do this. So for example, if you had a mix of Debian and Ubuntu servers, then you can write your win statement like this, and it'll work because both Debian and Ubuntu have apt. So you can use this if you have a mix of Debian and Ubuntu, that's really easy to solve. Now I'm not actually going to save my changes here 
because another thing I want to show you guys is just a reminder of gathering facts like I mentioned and I'll go ahead and type out the command that we've used in a previous video to go ahead and do that. So it was Ansible all and the module was gather facts and we could do dash dash limit and we can limit the results to the new server that we just added. So I'll just type the IP address for that server here. Let's press enter. And we get a bunch of information here. So I'm not going to go over every possible use case for the win statement. But we can see that there's a bunch of variables here. We even have Ansible product name that shows that it's VirtualBox. So if you wanted to run something, for example, only against VirtualBox virtual machines, you could target your win statement against Ansible product name as you see here. You could do equals equals VirtualBox. What we can also do here is check which operating system or distribution the host is running so we know how to write our win statement. So for that, we'll just run the same command again, but we will grep for Ansible distribution. I'll press enter. And we actually get several variables here. The first one is the one that we've been using or the one that I showed you earlier, Ansible distribution. And for this host, it's CentOS. We also have Ansible distribution version. So if you want to run your plays against a specific version of the distribution, you can actually do that here. So for example, if I go back to the playbook here, we could basically change it to something like this to match that variable that we saw in the gather facts. Now obviously this is not going to work because this is not version 8.2 of Debian or Ubuntu, but if this was CentOS, you could do something like this to target a specific version that would work just fine. So for example, you could also do Ansible distribution then the double equal sign and Ansible distribution version 8.2. So now we're targeting CentOS, but only versions 8.2. Again, this will fail because we're still using apt, but I wanted to write out the statement what it would look like if we wanted to target a very specific version of the distribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this change here. And now we're back to the way the file was before. So let's go ahead and expand this playbook to target CentOS as well as Ubuntu. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire section here. So basically I'm going to copy everything and then I'm going to paste it right here. And I basically duplicated everything. So as you can see, we have the first three plays, the update repository index, the installation of Apache 2, and the installation of PHP, all for Ubuntu, and they all depend on Ubuntu. But starting here, we're going to change this around a bit. So first of all, we wanna change these to CentOS because these last three plays are going to be targeting CentOS. Now we have CentOS targeted for those, but we actually have other problems because we don't have apt on CentOS, but we do have DNF. So I'm going to change all the occurrences of apt to DNF for these. So that's a bit better, but we also have another problem. And that is that the package names are also different on CentOS, so Apache 2, that's the name of the package for Apache on Ubuntu and Debian. But on CentOS, it's HTTPD, just like that. And actually the PHP package is simply PHP, so that's a bit simpler. Now I left the update cache right here because that actually works on CentOS as well, so I'm going to leave that alone. And we should be good to go ahead and run this playbook now. So what I'm gonna do is save it and then run it. And fingers crossed, let's see if this will actually work. So what I'm gonna do is run this playbook just like we did before, but now we have tasks specific to Ubuntu and tasks that are specific to CentOS as well. 
Let's see what happens. We can already see that the install Apache 2 package name here did run on CentOS. I forgot to change the verbiage of the name, but you get the idea. Now we do have an actual problem with CentOS though. If you recall in a previous video, when we installed Apache on Ubuntu or Debian, the default Apache website was immediately accessible, but that's not the case with CentOS though. So if I go down here to my browser, we have the default web page for Ubuntu for Apache, as I mentioned. But if I change the IP address to the CentOS system, this is going to fail. And the reason why is because there are two problems actually. So if I go over here to the CentOS system, we can basically do system CTL status HTTPD, which is the name of the service for Apache on CentOS, the same as the package name. So it's not actually running. So what I can do is do sudo systemctl start httpd. I'll press enter. Type in the password here. I'll go down here back to my browser. I'll refresh the page and it's still not going to work. Why? Well, first of all, I want to mention that we want to refrain from running a manual command like this because we are using Ansible to automate and we want to automate everything, but I haven't actually covered starting services just yet, so we're going to cover that in a future video. But there's actually another command that we need to run to allow communication to port 80, which is what Apache runs on by default. So for that, we will run sudo firewall-cmd dash dash add dash port, set that equal to 80 slash TCP, and then enter. And it says success. So if I go down here back to the browser again, now it works just fine. Now we have the Apache default website for CentOS. And you know, we ran another manual command, didn't we? So basically we want to think like automation masters. We want to automate everything. So every time we run a command manually, it's okay every now and then. But if we are going to run that command multiple times in the future, we basically want to write it down and then plan on automating that later. So now we have two things that we want to automate in the future, starting services, we want to start the HTTPD service, and we also want to add a firewall rule to allow traffic to reach the CentOS system via port 80. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I just wanted to point that out to you guys so you know what the current flaws are in the playbook that we have written so far. But anyway, we have made some changes to our Ansible Git repository, and we always want to make sure that we commit those changes back up to master. So if I run git status, we can see that we have two files that are modified. So if we run git diff on the inventory file, then we can see that the change that was made is I added that CentOS system. We can see that right here. So I'm going to add that and then commit with a message added CentOS server. And it's just a habit for me to type get commit messages in all lowercase, so you can probably, hopefully ignore that. So we have that staged right there. So get status. We still have one more file that we have updated since we started working on this repository today. So what we'll do is get diff. And basically we already know what the changes are but we just wanna make sure that everything looks exactly as we think it should. I could press enter to scroll down here and we can see that we have added additional plays and we have added win statements to target specific distributions. Now again, this is a very unorganized mess, so I do understand that. We will get to refactoring and reorganizing this in a future video, but what we wanna do is go ahead and commit the changes for now. So I will add this current version of this playbook to version control and we will see now that we have that file staged for commit and we also have a commit that's ready to go. So let's go ahead and commit the last file here. Or whatever you want to say, it really doesn't matter. We now have two commits that are staged and ready to go. So let's go ahead and push those up to GitHub.
And there we go, we should be fully synchronized. And that concludes this particular video. So there you go. In the next video, I am going to show you guys some ways that we can actually do the reorganization and consolidation that I've been talking about to clean up the playbook and actually make it look better. So go ahead and check out that video when it's uploaded, if it hasn't already been uploaded, and I will see you there. <music>